what is going on guys today i will be documenting my go-to method in terms of washing the car when you are a city dweller or when you're in a new york city apartment you're limited to water resources you're limited to space and everything else so um let's go ahead and just get this started Basically, my go-to method is this Optimum No Rinse, ONR. And for this thing, uh, it's proven effective for me for the past, I don't know, about a year or so since I adopted this method. So let's go ahead and just try this out. Um, I have a couple of things out here right now. This is a 4.5 gallon bucket. I rounded it up to five. And um, the instructions are saying to use one ounce per two gallons of water. So company is saying that this cap right here, if you have the 32 ounce bottle, this is a half an ounce. So I already took a few uh, B-rolls for you to uh, see what my mixing ratio is. Basically it's gonna be, since it's a 4.5 gallon of water, I rounded it up. Uh, I use four capfuls for the four gallons and I do additional capful for the whole bucket right here so basically that's five capfuls uh, then again you might have a bigger uh, bucket so it's up to you again uh, disclaimer this is just my method of washing a car you go ahead and uh, use your own method or kind of I don't know mix it up a few and see what your own proven method is anyway let's go ahead and just get this started the car is decently dirty uh, it's about a week since I washed the car right here and it's been through a couple of storms this week so we'll see how it goes I have this pressure bottle right here I don't think I need it today because the car is not dirty but basically I use it to go ahead and pre-treat the car and how the science works is basically this is like a, I don't know I really don't know the chemistry between this but it creates a lubricant layer so that the debris or the grit doesn't go ahead and scratch up your paint or your clear coat most importantly I usually if it's a really dirty car especially after winter especially after like going through some road gravel or a work site I go to the gas station to go ahead and do a pressure washer spray uh, first all right so what I have here is a clean microfiber what I like to do is soak it rinse it just maybe half dry so it's dripping but it's not dripping wet right and I like to just use the plush side of it and I'll drag it down like so and here is what you see right now from one initial run through. If it's dirty again, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the water, but it doesn't look as dirty. So I'm gonna just go ahead and repeat the method. And here it is again, not dirty. Basically, I'm just gonna run through the whole roof or the whole hood like so. Switch it up. All right. Put it back down. And basically, this is how I rinse the whole car. And again, the science in this uh, solution or this mixture is the fact that um, it's going to create some sort of barrier within the water to go ahead and bring down all the grit to the bottom of the water so it doesn't go ahead and scratch up your paint. At the same time, you also have the grit guard to do the job so it's not um, mixing the grit and the dirt with your microfiber towel or your wash mitt. But basically, I'm going to run through it one more time like so. a little bit of dirt here. Right. 
Now to finish it off, panel by panel, now that I know there's no dirt, I'm going to rinse it almost completely dry, not completely, but to a point where your microfiber towel is dry enough to pick up additional liquid or water. I usually fold it like that and I run the flatter side, more coarse side, along the panel to dry it up. Alright, and here it is. So far so good, but again, if you haven't washed this for two weeks, it's going to get a lot more dirtier than this. Then again, my suggestion is to run it through a pressure washer bay at that point, which to me in the city, it costs between uh, five to eight bucks or so. So we're going to let this pre-soak in, let the grid guard do its job. And from here in my pocket, I do have a, another clean microfiber. This one is not as plush, all right? but I'm gonna use the same method to go ahead and dry it. Again, if you don't believe in my uh, philosophy of leaving in the, in the pocket, that's all up to you. My pockets are clean. All right, we're gonna just run it through by drying it panel by panel. And again, we're starting from the hood today. Um, if you're a believer in washing the top down, then that is a, you know, you should stick to your method as well. But since this is washing it panel by panel and less of a water trickle down type of um, situation, I, own, I do whichever panel I feel like um, is at ease to me. But usually I do the hood first, then I run through the doors and then I go ahead and clean up the roof. All right, so this is, the first panel is done, all right, slick. Um, and from there, let me go ahead and just give you a closer look at the side panel. All right, with the side panel is a little bit different. Because I'm not technically able to do this, well I am, but I usually fold it up and I work from top to bottom or side to side, whichever. All right, and here you go. This is more dirty on the side because again, this has been through a rainstorm. It's been through Manhattan. So as you can see from here, there's dirt right here. So at this point, I like to run it through again. Loosen it up. And this is what it looks like after. Run it through the same method. Now, the further bottom you, you, you get, the more dirty it is. So, if you wanna, based on your preference, if you wanna wash this last, you could go ahead and do so as well. But again, like I said, I do one panel at a time. Here. The first run basically took care of everything. As you can tell, this is from the first run, this is from the second run. Alright, 
run it through again. I use the flatter side of the microfiber to wipe it down. Now in the perfect world, would I prefer to use the old traditional two bucket method? Heck yes, I would. Uh, that's just too much of a time constraint for me. And also, again, a water constraint. So we're gonna dry it in out. Um, I had a pressure washer, well, I still have a pressure washer. And it was nice, very convenient in the fact that it was easy to wash the car with. And I felt at ease when I was pressure washing. It was kind of like a therapy session for me, stress relief, but it got tired and dragging the hose from my complex, through my complex, down my complex, and then into, because that was my main water source. So uh, I found out about the situation through my friend, actually. He, he was using ONR for his WRX, and then at that point, I was a believer in the two bucket method, and then just washing your car straight out, and then detailing and everything, but not realizing that, hey, I am in the city, and I wasted a ton of time on cleaning the car. So, as of right now, this is clean. The driver uh, passenger panel is clean. But, I mean, again, uh, adopt my method or can modify it to your liking. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the whole car, maybe do a time lapse with it. Um, maybe I'll do one more panel for you guys to check out. All right, so, Again, with this pressure bottle, you don't have to. I'm not, I don't really need it today because the car is clean, but basically use this to pre-treat it. All right. If you want to pre-treat the rocker panels, you can. And then do the same thing over. Guess I'll film the passenger side and then from there, I'll just work on the whole car by myself. softer side first all right run it down if you're more comfortable with adding more water as more lubricant then you can as well just leave it kind of dripping and then run it down wash Again, rinse. Again, rinse. So we're going to flip it over to the cleaner portion. a test pretty clean so that means you're good and basically you just run it through again all right and that's clean just for a peace of mind run it through again That's it. Now you use a dryer, the uh, flatter side of the microfiber. Dry it out. And then dry it up. Now this method is great because it's kind of portable. Like I have a chemical guy, um, 4.5 gallon tank right here, a bucket. 
if you're in a city, even if you have city street parking, you could take this out. It's much safer even if you, you know, bring it to a parking lot, a vacant parking lot, for you to do so without cars driving by. But that's completely up to you. This is the method that works for me, and it's been proven, and I like it. Now, if you have a garage with an easy access water supply, washing a car with a pressure washer might even be faster. But for me, again, I have to clean up, drag everything back up. And at that point, it just wasn't, wasn't really worth it to me. It took a lot of time, but here you go. This is, um, this is basically done, the rear passenger. And then I will go ahead and clean up the rest of the car. All right, I'll be right back. Alright guys, so we are basically done with everything. Here is how the solution works. Alright, um, depending on how dirty your vehicle is, it's gonna, uh, your microfiber or your mitt's gonna turn out differently. So mine hasn't been washed in about a week or so. So uh, definitely there are times when it's more dirtier than this. But I wanna let you know if done correctly in my opinion, um, your microfiber in the end, like the detail mitt, should not be dirty or very minimal dirt. Um, like for here, you see it's pretty much clean. That means you basically got everything on the first round using the plush side of the microfiber or your wash mitt. Um, there is right here where it grays a little bit on the edges of here. So you see a little bit of dirt. All right, but overall it is still pretty much clean in general all right now again if you have more space you could leave your microfiber elsewhere but i usually leave it in my pocket which is clean for the most part right as far as the water part here's how it looks it's pretty much clear um, i'm not going to waste the water today as of yet uh, usually i don't go ahead and clean the rims all the time but I feel like, you know, I should today just to go ahead and let you guys see what I do with the leftover water. Um, so as right now, I forgot the, the brush to clean the rims. So I'm gonna go ahead and check to see if I have used microfiber towel. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this bit right here. All right. All right, with, the, with this uh, used microfiber, usually I just use whichever side, but usually on the flatter side of things, less plush side. All right, and then I just go through each spoke. And unfortunately, I did not bring out the wire brushing, the wheel brush, so more tedious job today but overall this is basically what I do so I'm gonna go ahead and do the passenger rear first before I tackle on the front driver and passenger wheels because those are the most dirtiest I save the dirtiest wheels for last I'll be right back
All right, so I have the PNS bead maker right here in a spray bottle and your microfiber towel. We'll spray some into the towel and just soak it up. Try and get this done before the sunlight hits the paint and heats it up. Um, but again, just want to talk about my preferred method. If I had my own garage, yes, I would go ahead and use a two bucket and also use the pressure washer and also your foam cannon. All of those utilities or uh, tools I do still have, but I can't really, well, it's not like I can't, it's, um, it's just, it takes up a lot of time to set up. So I adopted this new method and I pretty much also came to terms with the fact that this is a three year old vehicle. I purchased this certified pre-owned, not like the uh, Mark 6, which I had completely new. The Mark 6, I, I went ahead and clear board everything. The Mark 7, since it was certified, it already came with a couple of hood scratch, um, hood um, rock chips. So because of that, I decided just to go ahead and forego the clear bra or the 3M paint protection film, PPF, whatever you like to call it. And basically, I mean, it's not like I don't care for the car. It's more like I'm less uptight about the vehicle, especially with uh, parking. Uh, I still park strategically, but um, if there's a parking space closer, I'll analyze it and, and so on and see if it's worth, you know, risking your car getting dented, etc. Shopping carts running into it, etc. But overall, you know, um, it's still a golf, like many people see it as. So yeah, thanks again for watching this video. I know it's a pretty lengthy video, but modify my procedure or my setup to your liking and see what you guys could do. I'm sure everyone could do a lot better than this uh, half-ass job, right? But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care, peace.